Hi, um, welcome to PTC TV. My name is Tony Chan. Uh, I'm editor at large at Comstay International. And with me today is uh, Neil Montefiore. Uh, I hope I, spell, I pronounced that right. Um, who is the chief executive officer for Starhub, which is a full service operator in Singapore. Uh, it's, it's very interesting in, in the fact that Starhub actually uh, is a big shareholder of uh, the Opco, which is the operating uh, the Opco operating company of the Next Generation National Broadband Network uh, Initiative from the Singapore government. Uh, perhaps you can talk a little bit about you know your uh, your role in that area and how that sure. how that's been uh, yeah. impacting your business. Sure. The Next Generation Network in Singapore is uh, is a government initiative. It's it's divided into three areas. The first area is the is the Netco part, that's the, that's the company that puts in the passive optical fibre. That's a consortium called OpenNet, mm -hmm. and that rolls out. And then operationally separate from that is our 100% our owned subsidiary Nucleus Connect, uh, and that lights up the fibre. Okay. And then they, they sell the, the service to retail service providers, which will be companies like Starhub in, on the retail side, as well as any others that want to take services and sell them to consumers. Right. So it's quite... An, it's quite an, an advanced project now. It launched, uh, first customers came on in August last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we've covered past about 60% of the households so far in Singapore and we hope to have about 95% passed by 2012. So okay. it's going quite well, yeah. Okay, so how, how does that actually impact your business as, a, as an operator because obviously you have access to one of the latest you know, technologies yeah. on think, the ground? I think the main thing is customers that really need high speed internet access will be able to get a minimum of 100 megabits per second. Wow. Uh, using the next, yeah, it's quite, and 50 megabits per second uh, uploading as well, as well as 100 megabits downloading. So it's quite, it's quite advanced. It'll be one of the fastest countries in the world when it's, when it's complete. But for us, there's also the, the corporate side because at the moment we do provide corporate services, but mainly to buildings in the central business district. Our network really only covers about 1,000, 1,100 buildings. With this next generation network, we'll cover the remaining 20,000 buildings that we don't cover at the moment. So that's a big business opportunity for us, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, so uh, do you foresee any uh, impact from this uh, capa new capability on your kind of international demand? Oh, definitely, I think. I yeah. mean, we're seeing more and more of the international capacity being used by coming from consumers. And it's because people have shifted in the way they, they use the internet. They're using it more and more for video content and they're demanding more and more quality in that video content. So there's more and more traffic coming from the consumer segment apart from the business segment, which is also growing. So yeah, there's going to be a continued growth in demand for, for international capacity. And I think particularly what is changing is the actual destination. So more and more we're seeing China coming up on the list of, of countries that we need capacity to, as well as the traditional European and the US areas. Right. Okay, so uh, as a full service provider, I mean, like we talked about the NBN, which is kind of fixed fiber, uh, but th obviously there's, there's a huge dynamic going on in, in the mobile space, so how does that actually fit in together? Well, uh, just over a year ago, we, we, we entered uh, what I call the smartphone revolution in, in Singapore. It's when the iPhone became available to all three operators, Singaporeans adopted it in, in a tremendous way. The number of phones sold doubled overnight in, in in the first month okay. and it stayed at that sort of level since and about half the phones uh, we sold at that point were iPhones and that's it's still between 40 50 percent and about 75 percent of the phones we sell are smartphones now and about on the network about 50 percent of the users are actually using smartphones and they're more and more using it using the data capability of the smartphones so a typical user will use about a gigabyte of data a month yeah. Right. So, and, and how many users on the, on these mobile data plans do you have? <laughs> we have we have a, we have about uh, fifty percent of our customers are on the mobile data okay. plans. Yeah. Okay. So you're talking about a lot of bandwidth, and, and yep. is that impacting the international space as well? I mean, it's, it certainly is. Yes. Okay. I mean, we we, we 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 it's slightly mitigated in Singapore because we oh, about three years ago we introduced the USB modems that people put in laptops, and that really generated a lot of traffic. And about 80% of the of the traffic on our mobile network, the data traffic, comes from laptops uh, and the USB modems. So we'd already upgraded our networks. So the Singapore networks are all already all IP backhaul, very high speed backhaul to each base station, and got the very very high speed uh, base station to handset uh, interfaces as well. So. Right, right. Okay, so it seems like you know Singapore has emerged as one of probably mm -hmm. the most sophisticated market in the world. If you have, if you get fiber in the ground, you have. Uh, I'm assuming you're running H HSPA plus now. Oh yes. So, uh, so 
I mean, how how is that changing your business as a, as an as an operator? I mean, well, I think I think it's changing it in the way cus customers are using the network. Definitely, so more and more data, less and less voice. We're seeing we're seeing voice commoditize a bit. Obviously, there are applications on the smartphones that let you do voice over IP, and we think that will continue. So we'll see voice commoditizing. We need to look at ways, different ways of charging for data because some, although the average is quite acceptable of one, one gigabit gigabyte. Uh, uh, per month, but oh, wow. there are some very very greedy, heavy users, and we need to find a way of charging people for what they're actually doing uh, with, with, with the high-speed data. So right. uh, we're looking at how we can do that and change the way we charge customers. And, and uh, you know, uh, as, as a full-service operator, you obviously has a, have, a, have a TV offering as well, yes. or a media mm -hmm. offering. How, like, it, you know, is this actually fitting in very well yeah. now that you have, you know, mobile? Well, I think people talk about TV everywhere, and we've, we've already implemented that. So we, okay. if, what, we, what we're looking at now is developing the home gateway so we've started to launch that so every device in the home can access all the services we provide and what we have already is on any any smartphone you can access uh, some 30 of our tv channels and okay. you can pay for it on a daily basis or a monthly basis you can okay. you can just wow. view on demand if you want and that's proven quite popular but we're also we see now with the with the pa the pads and the and the uh, yeah. other other type of devices coming yeah. out that <laughs> more and more people want if you go to any home people are accessing the same all different types of, uh, of, of services using lots of different devices so, and we need to integrate all those services onto all the devices so if you're watching TV you can still if you want access social social networks right. so you can say oh look at this look at this channel on Facebook and things like that you know. right okay yeah. uh, just to wrap that up uh, what, 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 would, what would you be focusing on this year like for 2011 just to give an overview of the, okay yeah. I think I think it's, it's, it's developing how we how we monetize the increased data usage coming from smartphones and it's how we use the next generation network to develop our corporate business those are the two main areas and i think also in the international scene we need to see how we can again change the way that we uh, charge for the international capacity because i think more and more it's going to we want to be able to charge depending on the quality of service that's required some people don't need high quality and low latency some people do but we, at the moment we sort of do flat rate charging we need to look at how we can differentiate the services we provide. Okay, awesome. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And, Thank and you very much. Have a good, great show. Thank you. Thank you, Neil.